Welcome back, dear viewers of um, Morning Barakah. Um, kind of really continuing the health and wellness um, discussions, we're going to be focusing more on the human body now, um, in particular the lungs, um, because a lot of times we kind of focus on the heart, the mind, or the brain, and uh, the stomach, but actually when it comes to the lungs and the functions of the lungs, um, what more do we need to know? What really do we need to know about the lungs for us to be well informed about this particular area. Um, luckily, we have with us a dear friend of the channel, but also an expert in this field, um, Dr. Sayyid Yasser uh, Madani. Uh, we, we are very, very grateful to have you on the show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How's things? You okay? Alhamdulillah. Brilliant. Welcome Brilliant. To the show. Thank you very much. Um, so, we are, the theme through this um, series is going to be focusing on the lungs. Sure. Um, and Really, I suppose people don't really, it's as Ali was saying, we don't really focus on so much. We're just thinking about the heart, the brain. Um, really, from a sort of a basic level for, you know, obviously you're a medic. Most of us are you know, non-clinical. So mm. what's the functions, of the, what's the important functions of the lungs for, okay. for us to sort of sure. learn from? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sinna Muhammad wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I hope the viewers find this useful, inshallah, at home. Inshallah. Um, as you said, we don't focus on the lungs as much as we do, for example, uh, the heart and other parts of the body. Um, uh, perhaps before we talk about the function of, of the lungs, maybe if we can talk about the anatomy of the lungs a bit, because mm. um, that will nicely lead on to how the lungs work, yeah. um, which, which then sets a precedence for the remainder of the episodes, yes. which is about different lung conditions. Mm -hmm. And once we've understood a, b a bit about how the lungs work and a bit about the anatomy, um, then hopefully we understand those conditions a bit better. So we, we have two lungs, uh, and in fact our viewers can, uh, can see diagram number one. We have two lungs, one on the right and one on the left. The, the one on the right has three lobes, which essentially are three, three parts. Mm -hmm. The lung on the left has two lobes, or two parts. The reason why the left lung is a bit smaller is because we have the heart on that side as well, on oh, the right. left, left side. Okay. Um, and then there is a tube, which is the windpipe, the, the medical word for it is the trachea, mm -hmm. and that essentially connects our nose and our mouths to the lungs. Mm. So you can actually feel your tube going down the throat. Mm. So part of the tube is actually outside the lung, and part of it is inside the lung. And you can, the, the tube is supported by cartilages, mm. which keep it uh, strong and, 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 uh, and upright, uh, and those cartilages are C-shaped. Um, uh, and C-shaped around Yeah, uh, the almost pipe. like a horseshoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, you can feel them if you press along the front part of your trachea or your windpipe. Dear viewers, you can, you can feel your... We're trying. <laughs> We're finding them. <laughs> you can actually to. feel your trachea. So, um, and then the trachea divides into two. Mm -hmm. uh, so the right main bronchus, the left main bronchus, which are the two major airways leading into the lungs, the left and the right. And then those airways, those tubes, if you like, um, uh, the airways is the technical term, the tubes is the lay term. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll use tubes or yeah. airways interchangeably. They then get smaller and smaller and lead mm. uh, and divide out to different branches, almost like a tree. Right. So our, our second diagram will show the, the tree, the tracheal bronchial tree. It starts mm -hmm. with the trachea, then it goes to the bronchi, the main bronchi, and the bronchi divide and divide, and then they divide into bronchioles, smaller, smaller, smaller tubes. And those tubes lead to air sacs. So if, if we can go back to the first diagram, uh, please. The air sacs are the terminal part of those units. Uh, they're called right. alveoli. So okay. the alveoli is a medical term. The air sac is really important, and we'll come back to that. It, it's, it really is responsible for the main function of the lung, which is which will answer your question, yeah. what, what is the main function of the lung. Mm. So we'll talk about that in a second. And as you can see, under the lungs, there's a diaphragm. Mm -hmm. That is a yes. large muscle which divides the thorax, the chest cavity, from the abdominal cavity. Mm. Not only does it divide, but its main function is in respiration as well, in breathing. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Now, surrounding the lungs, if we can go to diagram number three, please, um, is a thin membrane, a thin lining called the pleura. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the membrane that surrounds the lung is called the visceral pleura. And then inside the rib cage, inside the chest wall, um, there's another membrane, which is the parietal pleura. When you say membrane, what, what is it? So a lining, okay, a very a lining. thin lining, okay. extremely thin lining. Mm -hmm. And those linings, the, the two pleurae, they rub against each other. Mm -hmm. And when you're breathing in, breathing out, they're rubbing against each other. And there's a lubricant that's produced in that area that will... Um, that will 
allow the, them to slide against each other okay. smoothly. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a cavity, the pleural cavity, between the edge of the lung, the outside of the lung, and the chest wall. And that cavity in normal state, in healthy states, should actually be empty. Okay. But in diseased states, it's filled with fluid, oh. it fills with blood, with infection, with pus, or with air. Which affects the... the it affects the rubbing of the lung, the but, but, but essentially it has other effects which are more important, oh. which is it compresses the lungs, mm. fluid from outside pushes onto the lungs and compresses them, and it presses on the diaphragm and, and causes breathlessness, etc. Now, I'm a, I'm a lung specialist, I'm a respiratory specialist, but, but my subspecialty is actually in diseases of the pleura. Mm. That's my main interest. Um, of all the so we're not probably not going to touch on plural diseases much mm -hmm. uh, later on in the in the next eight episodes actually because they're not as common as other conditions which we'll speak about right. uh, and then the other things that are also involved in the respiratory system in the breathing um, is are the muscles so we mentioned the diaphragm the diaphragm is the major muscle that's involved and when you breathe in the diaphragm contracts and pushes down and your tummy goes out because mm. um, the diaphragm is pushing onto the abdominal contents and your tummy goes out and when you when you breathe out the, t the diaphragm relaxes and goes back into a dome shaped mm. you know subhanallah you know, I was it's, just it's about just, to I just think it's just as amazing he's talking? yeah no no, no, no. So I was so just thinking yeah, right. subhanallah like <laughs> it's how just does amazing. everything just yeah. go into place just so amazing. perfectly amazing yeah. and then the other muscles that are involved in breathing are the intercostal muscles which are between the two ribs there's muscles there's a external and internal intercostal yeah. muscles, they're involved in breathing as well, breathing in, breathing out. And then all of that is controlled by a respiratory center in the brain. So we have our main brain, which is the cerebrum, mm. and, then the, uh, and then the part that connects the brain to the spinal cord mm -hmm. is called the brainstem. Mm. And within the brainstem is the breathing center, yeah. and that controls so our breathing. So actually our breathing really, we're, we're not, normally we're not thinking about yeah. it, right? Yeah. We're just, yeah. we're just you know, breathing in and out, um, and actually our, our brain is controlling it. So those, that, that's the anatomy, yeah. the lungs, you have the lungs, you have the tubes, you have the air sacs, you, there's tissue around the air sacs, which we can touch on upon mm -hmm. later. Um, you have the pleura, the lining of the lungs, you have the muscles, and you have the brain. And any of that pathway can be affected mm -hmm. and can affect the breathing system. And sometimes more than one of those um, pathways can be affected. Brilliant. And then that's, that's, really that's the anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the first part done. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very <laughs> fascinating. I hope the viewers are enjoying this. Uh. Um, yeah. Now, as for the physiology, the physiology mm. means function of the lungs. The main function of the lung is gas transfer. We're breathing in air from the outside. Yeah. And within air, what we really are breathing in, what we really want, I should say, is oxygen. Yeah. oxygen yeah. 21% of air is actually oxygen. Most of it is not oxygen. Most of it is nitrogen and other things. Wow. And we're breathing in oxygen, and that oxygen goes through the airways, all that tubes that I just described, and it goes through the tubes and it goes into the air sacs. Now, if we can bring up diagram number um, five, I think it is. I think number five is the air sacs. Oh. The air sacs are surrounded by blood vessels. The red things that you can see right, are yeah. tiny, tiny capillaries, blood mm. vessels. Within the blood vessels is blood, and within that is red blood cells. Within that is the hemoglobin. hemoglobin, and the hemoglobin has a high affinity for oxygen. So the oxygen diffuses, if you remember from your, your GCSE, ah, yeah, yeah. it's all coming back really right now. Yeah. <laughs> so within the air sac the is a space, air, oxygen is there, the oxygen diffuses across the, the thin membrane that surrounds the air sacs and into the blood vessels and into the red blood cells. It's held by hemoglobin, hemoglobin yeah. and it's, the blood is pumped th through to the heart. Mm and the, the left side of the heart in particular, where the blood, after the blood has become oxygenated by the lungs, mm. and the left side, of the, uh, left side of the heart is, yeah. is more powerful than the right side because the left side of the heart actually pumps blood to throughout the body. body. You know, against gravity, you know, to your yeah. legs, to your limbs, to your brain, yeah. uh, sorry, um, with gravity down, downstream yeah. and against gravity upstream to the brain. Yeah. Um, so the left side of the heart receives uh, blood from the lungs after, after it had become oxygenated. Is, is there a part of that um, flow that has more of the blood um, the oxygen received? Like, so is it, is it the brain that first yeah. gets So, it so all, all of your body requires oxygen yeah. and it's all relative. Yeah. You know, you know, certain organs probably require uh, a bit more, etc. But 
all organs have cells yep. and mitochondria and DNA, etc., etc., and they all need oxygen as part of their normal functioning process to, function. to produce energy, to, to produce ATP. And you need that, you need the oxygen to produce energy. To. And it goes so, without saying, if you limit the amount of oxygen that you breathe in, yeah. or if within the, these functions, exactly. the oxygen is kind of being affected yeah. or, or it's not going to the relevant parts, yeah. that's where you get the kind of the conditions and the diseases yeah. and all that. Exactly. So, you know, other parts of the body receive less oxygen yeah. if your lungs are not working properly. So actually the lungs are very important. Very important. Right. Yeah. The other function of the lung, well, it's part, part of the gas transfer. We talked about oxygen. Yeah. In fact, if I can just digress for a second and just share another piece of, you know, really interesting fact. These alveoli, these air sacs, there's 300 million of them in your lung. Wow. 300 million. Wow. That's quite amazing. And if you, div if you lay these out, all these alveoli, yeah. Per, per two lungs, per person, you lay them out. They're as, the, they're, they're as big as a tennis court. MashaAllah. Sitting in your lung. Wow. SubhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created our lungs in such a way, it's so clever, it's so smart, it's <laughs> mind-boggling, <laughs> but it's all about surface area. The more surface area you have, yeah. the more you enable gas transfer. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all about surface area. Mm. Just and, to, and you I, have, I, I don't want to digress, but did the imams ever refer to this? Do you know? Gosh, that's an amazing question. <laughs> because we, we, we mm. always hear about the imams like mm. uh, referring to, to mm. scientific facts and, and they have these mm. you know, miracles that they talk about and then 1,400 years later, it's everything is just kind of being revealed. Mm. Did they kind of relate to this specific part, maybe the lung or so, the, the body or even? So there is, there is a book that the name escapes me at the moment. Um, uh, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Mm. As you know, he, Imam Jafar Sadiq lived in a time which he, he had, was, was much more open and conducive for him to spread the science of Ahl al-Bayt yes. yes. um, because it was the time where the Umayyad Khalifa was falling and the Abbas Khalifa hadn't yet started. Yeah. So he had a window of opportunity. Yeah. And he, he taught many scholars, as you know, he taught yeah. many of the big uh, scholars from the, the, uh, the Sunni school of thought. Yeah. Um, and there's, I think, I may, I may be wrong, I hope people don't call me on this, but Hadith Mufaddal. Mm. I think is the, the name of the, the book which is out there actually can be downloaded from on, online and that talks about some amazing facts about mm. the human body mm. um, but a lot of the students of Imam Ja'far al later on went to become either physicians or wow. scientists or chemists wow. yeah. um, again uh, the name of, of a particular person who was a chemist um, escapes me so I can't remember specific hadith about the lungs though okay. but there are things and there are, of course, tabbi la imma, tabbi rasul. There are things that where the Ahl al-Bayt and the Holy Prophet have, have spoken about health mm. from a medical point of view. Mm. Um, so that's, that's the function, yeah. the gas transfer. The other thing is when all that blood is used around the body, the body uses a, produces a waste gas, which is carbon dioxide, CO2. Yep. Again, it's on the, on the diagram that the viewers can see. The CO2 uh, travels from the rest of the body in the blood vessels, into the lungs, into mm. the air sacs, and is we breathe it out. Yeah. Okay. And this happens in every single yes. breath that we take. Yeah, every breath we take in and breath we, we breathe out. Mm. Um, that's the major function of the lung. The second function of the lung is protection. Actually, if you think mm. about it, we are exposed to so many things in the environment. I was just about to say, because you we mentioned... We breathe everything. Mm. Yeah. Because you mentioned 21% 20, 20 of, of, of the air is oxygen. Yeah. And technically, that's how much we... That's, that's what we need, is the oxygen. What about the rest of the... Yeah. So, so the rest of the air that we breathe in is fine, okay. but it's all the added stuff, the pollution, yeah. Yeah. the particulate matter, was, which is tiny, tiny little things. Mm. Um, all the noxious substances, smoke, dusts, whatever. And there are, there's a group of lung disorders which we describe as occupational lung diseases, okay. which are caused by environmental factors, yeah. either or organic dusts, so farmers, for example. Yeah. Um, and these are organic dusts or inorganic dusts, such as people that work in industrial environments mm. uh, with chemicals or fumes or dusts. Um, and they, they uh, are exposed to these dusts. For example, asbestos is one of them. Yeah. We have a lot of them in the, in the UK and the Western world, not so much in the Eastern world, yeah. really. Um, but if you, 9-11, for example, those firefighters that went to 9-11 yeah. uh, to rescue people, uh, and especially those that after it had collapsed, they were exposed to so many dust. Wow. A lot of them have actually developed um, 
you know, lifelong lung diseases mm -hmm. that have actually in many cases led to respiratory failure. Wow. And people have died from that because mm -hmm. their lung is damaged. So that's just an example. There's yeah. so many other examples. Other examples um, are in wars where people have used uranium and other nuclear weapons yeah. uh, and biological weapons um, and people have breathed in those chemicals and that's caused damage to the lung. So the lung protects us yeah. ag against these things and the way it does that against this is amazing uh, there's I think we have another diagram for the viewers diagram number six which mm. which will show the lining of the lung inside inside the, the tubes um, in the lining of the lungs there's hairs called cilia mm. Mm. and within the lining of the lungs the lungs normally produce in healthy states produce mucus mm. and that mucus traps these things that we breathe in mm. that right. are not healthy to our body mm. and then it's it, the cilia wafted up their hairs that beat like that. Mm. Yeah. They waft up that mucus and it comes all the way up to the throat and we swallow it without knowing. Wow. Oh, right. So rather than it remaining in the lungs mm. and causing damage. Okay, but then if we swallow it, where does it go then? So it, it's not the harmful to our stomachs, oh, okay, it's just, okay. you know, but it's harmful to our lungs, a lot of these things. So it's amazing. That's amazing. Um, we're nearly towards the end. Um, yeah. So as a lung specialist, um, what was it that drew you towards this sort of um, yeah. this area? Um, Are you still as excited yeah, about it when you yeah. sort of um, work in your... So I remember being a medical student actually. Um, one of my first placements, my first medical placement as actually as a third year medical student. The, the third year is when we start our clinical, you know, uh, experience as medical students. The first two, two years were mainly in universities and lecture theatres. I remember doing a respiratory um, rotation and that's when I started becoming interested in it. I think what, dri what drove me to it was the diversity of diseases. Right. The acuity versus the chronicity of the conditions. There are some conditions which are very acute, like mm. infections, which we'll talk about. Acute asthma and other things which cause acute respiratory failure. And, you know, as a respiratory specialist, you can go in there and potentially make a difference to someone's life and, and save someone's life. Mm. Whereas you have some people who have chronic conditions. Uh, and a lot of those conditions are irreversible. They cause chronic respiratory failure, and you just support them, mm. those co those patients to live with it, you know. Uh, and, and the other spectrum, uh, at the same end of those chronic, chronic conditions, is palliative care, where people you're just helping yeah. people with their symptoms at the end of life, you know, mm. lung cancers and things like that. So there's so much diversity mm. in different ways, and there's so much, so many different conditions that affect different ethnicities as well mm. within respiratory medicine. Oh, really? So you come across wide variety of people of different ages, patients of different ethnic groups, etc. Um, and the, the other thing that drives me to it is the, uh, the practical procedures. I like to do things with my hands. So there's a lot of uh, opportunity for practical procedures within respiratory medicine, uh, where again, you can make a difference to people's lives in terms of symptoms and diagnosis and management of their symptoms. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so we've been told you've um, done quite a bit of, of work in Iraq for charity yes. things. So inshallah, in yes. future pet episodes, we'd love to catch yeah, up and see what you've done that. and Shall hear about it. Um, I think we've, that's all we've got time. But uh, actually, just one question. You mentioned about the two lungs we have. Um, can we survive on one? Uh, we can survive on one. So there's a, um, a procedure or an operation called a pneumonectomy, which is, means removing of, of one lung. Right. And normally that's done in lung cancer where the cancer is so large that you have to remove, or, or so, not, not necessarily so large, but pressing on such vital structures that you can't get away with removing just a part of the lung. Oh, you have yeah. to remove the whole lung. Right. And people can survive. Some people can develop breathlessness. Uh, depending on how healthy the other lung is. Right. If that lung yeah. is damaged from emphysema and smoking, then, if, then they probably will be breathless. Yes. Mm. But at least they will survive uh, mm. cancer, yeah. potentially. Um, so yes, you can. In the same way that you can survive on one kidney, mm. normally, yeah. uh, most often you can survive on one kidney. Fantastic. Well, I think I we've got so much to discuss. Yeah, I've got more questions about that, but yeah. Um, <laughs> in terms of even keeping the lungs healthy, and inshallah, yeah. in the future episodes, we will um, we will discuss those. So thank you so much for today. No um, it's been a fascinating. I can't wait for the rest of the episodes to be honest with you. It's a very, it's a fantastic start. Um, there's a lot to take. Ali's in. usually chatty, so he's yeah. clearly <laughs> mesmerised by the information. So. Um, yeah, um, brilliant, but, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, well, look, yeah, just echo the words of, of Zara. Thank you so much for, for, for your time, uh, Sayed, and um, we look forward to having you on the, on sure. the following shows. Um, on that we note, um, we are carrying on with the kind of health topic or health vibe uh, within the show today. So um, brace yourselves. It's going to be um, quite uh, a challenging show. So hopefully you're, you're, you're relaxed, you're, you've got your tea in your hand. 
um, to take in and soak in a lot of the information that's going to be sent towards you. Um, after the break, we're going to have Sayyid Ali Nawab. We're going to be talking about jurisprudence, however, from a mental health perspective. Um, so join us after the break. <laughs> 